It's time to talk all things tech with editor of Tech Guide, Stephen Fennett. Good morning to you, sir. Firstly, Optus has announced a new partnership. Now, this is really interesting. As a country girl, I'm very interested by this one. They're confident they can provide 100% coverage across the country. That's right. Yeah, this, this is a huge deal announced between Optus, SpaceX and Starlink. Now, you can recall a week ago, we were talking about Telstra's partnership with Starlink. That was just to provide remote customers with voice and internet services. This Optus deal is a whole new thing with SpaceX and Starlink. And SpaceX actually going to launch new satellites to enable this 100% coverage of Australia. The, the, the figures you're hearing about coverage right now is coverage of the Australian population, which is around 98, 99% but also coverage of the Australian continent, which is only about 35%. So that means that that's 65% of our country, there is no cellular coverage whatsoever. So this deal with Optus and, the, and Starlink and SpaceX is going to enable a whole network of satellites to be able to provide, by the end of 2024, text messaging through the satellite service. And then by the end of 2025, voice and data and, and it's not going to require anything more than your regular 4G smartphone. So the technology of the satellites is going to be backwards compatible with our existing devices. So it's not a matter of Apple or Samsung and these phone manufacturers creating new technology. It's going to ex be able to be used on existing technology, which is going to be a game changer for, for the Optus network. Well, and you, you think of the, from a practical sense, you think of the Australian landscape as well. It is, we're a very vast country. It's, you know, there are parts of this country that you feel like you're on the moon and you, you don't have access via the, via the phone. So is it realistic, I suppose, and are we likely to see the major phone providers like Apple and Google and Samsung, et cetera, have to make some adjustments to their designs in future? Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, Apple last year with the iPhone 14 actually launched a new feature called Emergency SOS, which means you can, if you have no cellular coverage and it's an emergency, you can actually get a, a text message away to via satellite. So, and that's with no changes to the actual design of the of the iPhone. So, imagine that scenario where in in the next say, two to three years, when 5G Max is launched, 5G Max is, is going to take even more satellite coverage into account. Then, then it will require a new a new type of smartphone with a ra different radio. But at the moment, with this Optus deal, it's got, it looks like it's going to be just with the existing 4G LTE hardware, mm, which is great news. Um... Meantime, Apple has kicked off its new beta software program. Tell us all about that. Yeah, well, this is uh, the, the beta software program. About, about a month ago, they announced iOS 17, iPad OS 17, Mac OS Sonoma, all the different updates for Apple TV and Apple Watch. Uh, but rather than waiting until September when they're usually uh, released officially, cut, the users can now take part in this beta software program where they can actually download and use the software right now and contribute to finding out any bugs and, and having, having, uh, having a user of the system uh, early. So uh, iOS 17 is going to have lots of new features like enhanced messaging features, the live voicemail. There's a new standby mode that turns your phone into a, like a, a bedside clock. Uh, so plenty of new features for FaceTime, iPad OS, the same thing, you know, widgets, interactive widgets and, and other pro productivity tools. Uh, and there's also Mac OS Sonoma, which is the desktop software as well. So, But point is, you can jump in and install those right now on your Mac. I'll put instructions on Tech God on how to do that. One thing, though, to keep in mind, it would be a great idea to back up your devices just in case you don't want to lose all your data upgrading to this beta software. So, yeah, just, just update your devices before you go ahead and, and, and launch, install these new uh, versions of their software. Yeah, good advice there. Uh, moving on to a really interesting one now. Cyber safety leader Norton is helping people identify fraudulent emails and text messages. I mean, these emails and texts are getting so incredibly clever and they are getting in so many people now.
That's correct. Yeah, Norton, one of the leaders in cybersecurity, have actually released what they call a fictionary, which is a phishing dictionary. Phishing is the uh, is when they try to imitate uh, companies in text messages and emails. So it might be imitating Australia Post or your bank or the gas company. And now with Norton, this this fictionary now allows users to see refer to the most common scams. It might be a tax scam. It might be a, a services scam. That you know. Type you know, your your services are about to be disconnected. Click here, or your package is being redirected. Let's help you with that. These are all very common scams that Norton has put together in this dictionary, so that it's much easier for users to identify something, refer to something if they do happen to receive a text message or an email that is similar. So I think it's it's a great step to helping customers avoid becoming a victim of scams. And we're already talking, but up to three billion dollars has been lost just last year alone, that's just in Australia to, to scammers. So we really need to be vigilant here. We nearly really need to take, take precautions and Norton with this uh, new dictionary can help us do that. They are so sophisticated. It's actually quite terrifying now. In your space, is there a base level way to identify the difference between a scam? and uh, Because I don't even respond to text messages now. I don't bother answering phone yeah. calls now. You know, I log in straight online to my accounts now because I just feel like you can't trust anything. Well, that's exactly right. I think you're doing the exact right thing there. Uh, it's got to a point where you really can't trust emails, text messages that you don't know where they come from. Even if they're suggesting to to help you, they're trying to help you, that you've really got to have your antennas up and just go to the source. I, I think that's that's the best that's the best move. A lot of these scams though try to create a sense of urgency. Mm. But that that's the thing as well. My biggest advice to people is simple enough: don't react. A lot of people panic and think, oh, I don't want to lose my account or I want to get my package or all these things. And they, and they without thinking, they, they click on the link and by the time they realise they've, they've lost some money or that maybe their identity's been stolen. So I, I would just, just don't, don't react. Go check with the source. If there, if you if you have a package that's on the way, check with Australia Post or the courier company. Mm. If, if it's a, it looks like it's from your bank, Go to your bank and check that if there is a problem with your account. Go to your Netflix account. That's what they try to do. They try to trick you into thinking there's something that has to be done right now. And unfortunately, most of the time, people end up falling victims. Yeah, indeed. Stephen Fennick, thank you so much for that insight and advice this morning. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Julie.